A Tale of Two Cities by Charles Dickens. Book Summary. It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. Charles Dickens writes in the opening lines of A Tale of Two Cities as he paints a picture of life in England and France. The year is late 1775, and Jarvis Laurie travels from London to Paris on a secret mission for his employer, Telson's Bank. Joining him on his journey is Lucy Manette, a 17-year-old woman who is stunned to learn that her father, Dr. Alexander Manette, is alive and has recently been released after having been secretly imprisoned in Paris for 18 years. When Mr. Laurie and Lucy arrive in Paris, they find the doctor's former servant, Ernest Defarge, caring for him. Defarge now runs a wine shop with his wife in the poverty-stricken quarter of St. Antoine. Defarge takes Mr. Laurie and Lucy to the garret room where he is keeping Dr. Manette, warning them that the doctor's years in prison have greatly changed him. Thin and pale, Dr. Manette sits at a shoemaker's bench intently making shoes. He barely responds to questions from Defarge and Mr. Lorry, but when Lucy approaches him, he remembers his wife and begins to weep. Lucy comforts him, and that night Mr. Lorry and Lucy take him to England. Five years later, the porter for Telson's bank, Jerry Cruncher, takes a message to Mr. Lorry who is at a courthouse. Mr. Lorry has been called as a witness for the trial of Charles Darnay a Frenchman accused of being a spy for France and the United States. Also at the trial are Dr. Manette and Lucy, who are witnesses for the prosecution. Dr. Manette has fully recovered and has formed a close bond with his daughter. If found guilty of treason, Darnay will suffer a gruesome death, and the testimony of an acquaintance, John Barsett, and a former servant, Roger Clee, seems sure to result in a guilty verdict. Questions from Darnay's attorney, Mr. Striver, indicate that Clee and Barsett are the real spies, but the turning point in the trial occurs when Sidney Carton, Striver's assistant, points out that Carton and Darnay look alike enough to be doubles. This revelation throws into doubt a positive identification of Darnay as the person seen passing secrets, and the court acquits Darnay. After the trial, Darnay, Carton, and Striver begins spending time at the Manette home. Obviously attracted to Lucy's beauty and kind nature, Striver decides to propose to her, but is dissuaded by Mr. Lorry. Carton confesses his love to Lucy, but does not propose, knowing that his drunken and apathetic way of life is not worthy of her. However, he vows that he would gladly give his life to save a life she loved, and Lucy is moved by his sincerity and devotion. Eventually, it is Darnay whose love Lucy returns, and the two marry with Dr. Manette's uneasy blessing. While the couple is on their honeymoon, the doctor suffers a nine-day relapse of his mental incapacity and believes he is making shoes in prison again. Meanwhile, the situation in France grows worse. Signs of unrest become evident when Darnay's cruel and unfeeling uncle, the Marquis St. Evraymond, is murdered in his bed after running down a child with his carriage in the Paris streets. Although Darnay inherits the title and the estate, he has renounced all ties to his brutal family and works instead in England as a tutor of French language and literature. The revolution erupts with full force in July 1789 with the storming of the Bastille. The Defarges are at the center of the revolutionary movement and led the people in a wave of violence and destruction by 1792. The revolutionaries have taken control of France and are imprisoning and killing anyone they view as an enemy of the state. Darnay receives a letter from the Evrayman steward, who has been captured and who begs Darnay to come to France to save him. Feeling a sense of duty to his servant and not fully realizing the danger awaiting him, Darnay departs for France. Once he reaches Paris, though, revolutionaries take him to La Force prison in secret, with no way of contacting anyone and with little hope of a trial. Dr. Manette, Lucy, and Lucy's daughter soon arrive in Paris and join Mr. Laurie who is at Telson's Paris office. 
Dr. Manette's status as a former prisoner of the Bastille gives him a heroic status with the revolutionaries and enables him to find out what has happened to his son-in-law. He uses his influence to get a trial for Darnay, and Dr. Manette's powerful testimony at the trial frees his son-in-law. Hours after being reunited with his wife and daughter, however, the revolutionaries again arrest Darnay, based on the accusations of the death arches. The next day, Darnay is tried again. This time, the Defarges produce a letter written years earlier by Dr. Manette in prison condemning all Evraymonds for the murder of Madame Defarges' family and for imprisoning the doctor. Based on this evidence, the court sentences Darnay to death and Dr. Manette, devastated by what has happened, reverts to his prior state of dementia. And known to the Manette and Darnay family, Sidney Carton has arrived in Paris and learns of Darnay's fate. He also hears of a plot contrived to send Lucy and her daughter to the guillotine. Determined to save their lives, he enlists the help of a prison spy to enter the prison where the revolutionaries are holding Darnay. He enters Darnay's cell, changes clothes with him, drugs him, and has Darnay taken out of the prison in his place. No one questions either man's identity because of the similarities in their features. As Mr. Laurie Shepard's Dr. Manette, Darnay, Lucy, and young Lucy out of France, Carton goes to the guillotine, strengthened and comforted by the knowledge that his sacrifice has saved the woman he loves and her family.